Good morning. We got a beautiful morning and a really high tide, high enough for me to go grab Champ and bring her up on the rail. So Silva Bay Shipyard will pull a boat one more time. I get that right. Recognize the space at all? Welcome to Silva Bay Shipyards. Back in operation for me and me alone. I have uh, commandeered the space, got some permission, but hauled the boat out on the rail, took it apart, and put Champ up here. Now there's quite a few uh, repairs I need to do because we did a fair bit of damage to this poor girl last summer. Um, as you'll notice, a lot of the bottom coat is gone, but also I have, I think, seven soft spots in the deck. Now, this boat was originally launched in 1982 or 1983, can't really be 100% sure on that. And the fiberglass, because it's a racing boat, was quite thin, and it just hasn't held up. Now, there's Kevlar on the bottom, the bottom's been holding up really well, but the top side, very thin, has not held up. So, first order of business is just dry these out, and to dry them out, I am pumping air with a blower motor from uh, a boat, 12 volt blower motor, and I'm connecting it directly to the sponsor of this episode, AO Lithium and their amazing 100 amp hour lithium battery. I'm just gonna disconnect it. So this little tiny battery just looks like a regular 12 volt battery, but inside it has high discharge lithium iron phosphate. Now, for those of you who don't know, lithium iron phosphate is the direction that all deep cycle applications are going these days. It's a little bit heavier than lithium polymer, but way more stable and much more affordable. So you're starting to see some pretty nice and actually quite affordable little batteries. Now, this one, what it really excels at is its 200 amp output. Now, that is unheard of in the market right now. So this little 100 amp hour battery can actually power a pretty sizable inverter. So if you wanted a system where you didn't have to put a bunch of batteries in parallel just to get uh, discharge enough to actually run uh, like a 2,400 watt inverter or something around that range, uh, you could do it all just off this one battery. Now weight wise, this weighs less than a regular deep cycle battery. And if you're comparing its capacity to your regular lead acid deep cycle, this counts for two of them. Now it costs more than just two lead acid deep cycles, but you gotta remember also the lifespan. Now these things are rated for three to four times as much lifespan as your regular lead acid deep cycle. So basically buying one battery that does the same job as eight, eight lead acid batteries. So that's pretty impressive. It also comes with some nice features. My favorite of which, of course, is the Bluetooth module. So I've got the app here firing up, boots up pretty quick, connects via Bluetooth, and it gives me a state of charge, gives me all the parameters I need, including temperature sensors, how many cycles it's gone through, history on it, uh, it, it tracks all of it over time. And because, of course, it's a battery, uh, you don't really have to worry about this little unit running out of juice and stopping to work. 
Um, the nice thing about that is uh, I want to eventually install that battery in to Champ here. And um, of course, Champ doesn't exactly have a power distribution board. It doesn't have anything in it. And if I'm in a racing cat, it's quite wet. So the nice thing about this is I can put it in a waterproof box in the bottom of the boat and then use the Bluetooth module in this battery to connect to it and check all of its systems. And otherwise, I just don't have to think about it. I don't have to look about it. I don't have to log or, or set up any other electronics. It's all right there in the battery. So just does what I need to do. And it will eventually power a trolling motor, which should keep me from having to paddle this boat at all come uh, this summertime. So, so that's the battery. I'm gonna hook it back up to the blower and get it to dry the inside of this hull out so we can get back to work. So this is the issue we were having last summer with soft deck. This is what's happening. You see how it's a foam core with a thin layer of epoxy fiberglass and a thin layer on this side and nothing in between. And now it's cracked and that's sagging. So the fiberglass on the inside, which is incredibly thin, has cracked and broken and then the foam fell through. So what we're going to do is prop that up with some glue get the shape back into place and then strengthen it with another layer of glass on the interior. And uh, hopefully that stiffens everything up. Okay, so we've got the two hatch holes done. It's like seven layers of glass and then I used uh, the lightweight filler here just to build up the last bit on the corner because it's not structural and um, it was just going to be a real pain in the arse to, to do it by glass alone. Um, so it's perfectly flush now and when the hatches finally make it here, of course they have been slow on the delivery, I will be able to bolt them in with just a little bit of Sikaflex and they won't be taking any structural strain at all. It'll all just be uh, the fiberglass that does that. What did however arrive are my little solar cells. So we've got one of them up here on the foredeck. <clears throat> They're, I guess like, I, I had a really hard time finding one that would fit this boat properly. Uh, so when I did finally get one, it's not exactly as big, it's right for 50 watts and it's pretty poor quality compared to the nice Renogy ones that I would have been working with. But of course the Renogy ones aren't gonna fit on here, unfortunately. So you can see uh, they cost almost as much as the Renogy ones did. They only crank out 50 watts. Uh, they sit at uh, 16 volts top and um, you can't stand on them. You can't put any pressure really on them and they only bend like 20 degrees. But they're a bit smaller. So I can slide them up a little bit more forward in an area that I never ever sit or stand on. And that gives me room to add an inspection hatch here. Now I wasn't too particular about the inspection hatch. I just thought maybe it'd be nice to have a little one just to give me access to some of the stuff on this side. And I guess like in the original forming, there's some like plywood that has since rotted out that's still in there. And it's part of just like the forming. I don't think, I don't think it's structural at all. Cause like I said, it's foam core, fiberglass everywhere. But I think it was just part of the original form. Um, and it's just been slowly rotting and like it, my bilge will always be saturated with like a brown color. 
uh, because of that plywood. So if I can cut this open, I can get at it. I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did with the hatches, build it up with fiberglass, make it really structurally strong, so that even though this thing, which is pretty strong, um, it has a water seal and I wanna make sure that it is completely watertight when it's on there, so that means it cannot take any kind of strain, which means it needs enough fiberglass to take that strain away from the actual inspection hatch. Now, these just happen to be the ones I have, they're a little large, but uh, you know what? They're big enough that I could fit some stuff inside of a waterproof bag down inside of there. And now I have a whole other storage section on the boat, which is pretty cool. So um, feasibly in the future, I could fit all kinds of, feasibly in the future, feasibly if I go to take this thing camping or whatever, I can jam spare clothes, spare food, spare water down here. Um, now it's the front of the boat, so we do want to keep it light. Yeah, so let's go make some more dust. <laughs> Anyway, there's our little inspection hatches slash cargo hatches. There's some junk from the original frames to clean out of there and we will do that soon. But right now I'm just letting the epoxy set. While it sets, there's another part of the project that I would like to get done. And that is finding a home for my beautiful little aeolithium battery. Look at her. Now because there's a bunch of rotten plywood in there, I thought maybe I should not put more plywood inside of that boat. Instead, I'm gonna reuse this chunk of deck that I cut out for the hatches. And it's a little curved, but that's okay. Um, I'm just gonna cut it to size and then give myself a little lip on either side and glue it to the inside of the hull, giving the battery somewhere solid to strap down to. We'll raise it a little bit off the ground so if there is some water in there, it's not gonna slosh against the battery and uh, should help keep things dry and secure because of course this thing does sail pretty fast and we don't want this thing just rocking around inside. 200 amps of uh, 12 volt power is enough to do some pretty good welding. That's all the construction you're gonna see in this episode. We're gonna do part two once my hatches finally arrive and we can wrap up the whole refit of that boat, get the solar system working and get the motor on it. Uh, really wanna thank Aolithium for sending out that battery pack. We're gonna do a few more tests on it once she's in the water. But uh, if you guys are interested in checking out that battery pack, check out the link in the description. I am so excited about having a little Bluetooth powered battery in that boat because it means I do not have to open up that hatch in order to check anything. There is no control panel. There is no nothing. It's just all on your phone. And in fact, I get to have even state of charge, but not just state of charge, but like while I have my motor on, it'll tell me how much longer I can run the motor at that speed before I am out of battery, which allows me to calculate how far I can actually travel. So that's really cool, that's really exciting. Please check out the link in the description. Thank you so much to Aeolithium for sending out that battery pack and thank you guys for watching. Part two is coming up very soon.